Hi there, today we're going to start Bad Dad by David Walliams. Dads come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. There are fat ones and thin ones, tall ones and short ones. There are young ones and old ones, clever ones and stupid ones. There are silly ones and serious ones, loud ones and quiet ones. Of course, there are good dads and bad dads. This is the story of a dad and his son. Frank is the son and dad is the dad. His name is Gilbert. Chapter 1 Roar! Went dad's car as it sped round the dirt track. Frank's father was a banger racer. It was a dangerous sport. Cars would smash into each other. Bang! Wallop! Crash! As they zoomed round and round. Dad raced an old Mini that he had souped up himself. He had painted a Union Jack on the car and named her Queenie after a lady he admired, Her Majesty the Queen. The car became as famous in racing circles as Dad. Queenie's engine made an unmistakable sound like a lion. Roar! Dad was king of the track. He was the greatest banger racer the town had ever seen. People came from all over the country to watch him race. Nobody won more times than him. Week after week, month after month, year after year, Dad would lift the trophies above his head as the crowds cheered and shouted his name. Gilbert the Great! Gilbert the Great! Gilbert the Great! Gilbert the Great! Life was golden. Because Dad was a local hero, everyone wanted to know him. Whenever he took his son out for a pie and mash, the owner of the shop would give them double helpings and then wouldn't let them pay a penny. If Frank was walking down the street with his father, people in cars would beep their horns, beep beep, and smile and wave. The boy always felt a burst of pride whenever that happened. Frank even got mocked up on a test by his maths teacher after the man got a photo taken with his father at a parents' evening. No one was a bigger fan of Dad than his own son. The boy worshipped his father. He was a hero to him. Frank longed to be just like his dad one day, a champion race car driver. His dream was to one day drive Queenie. As you might expect, father and son looked alike. Both were short and round with sticky out ears. The boy looked like someone had put his dad into a shrinking machine. Of all the children at his school, Frank knew he was never going to be the tallest or the handsomest or the strongest or the cleverest or the funniest. But he had seen the magic and wonder his father could create with his skill and courage on the racetrack. More than anything, he wanted to taste that. As for Dad, he forbade his son from watching him race. A night would start with 20 cars speeding round the track and by the end there would be just one car still standing. Drivers often got badly injured in the pile-ups and sometimes spectators did too if the cars crashed out of the stands. It's dangerous, mate, said Dad. Gilbert always called his son mate. They were father and son but best friends too. But Dad... The boy would plead as his father tucked him up in bed. No buts, mate. I don't want you to see me get hurt. But you're the best. You'll never get hurt. I said no buts. Now, come on, be a good boy. Give us a huggle and go to sleep. Dad would always plant a kiss on his son's forehead before he went out to race for the night. As for Frank, he would close his eyes and pretend to be asleep. However, as soon as he heard the door close, he would creep out of bed and crawl down the hallway to the front door so as not to alert his mum. The woman would always shut herself in her bedroom and speak in hushed tones on the telephone whenever her husband was out of the house. Still dressed in his pyjamas, the boy would run all the way to the racetrack. Just outside the stadium was a huge tower of rusty old cars that had been smashed up in previous races. Frank would climb to the top of the pile. There he had the best view of the race. The boy would sit cross-legged on the roof of the highest car and watch all the bangers speed by. Every time his father's mini Queenie zoomed past, roaring as she went, the boy would cheer. Go, Dad, go! Dad had no idea his son was up there. The man barred his son from watching the race because he feared the worst might happen. One night, it did. Chapter 2 out of control. The night of the accident, there seemed to be something badly wrong with Dad's car from the start. Instead of the Mini's distinctive roar, today the engine was making a loud grinding noise, as if it was about to explode. 
As soon as Dad threw Queenie into gear at the start line, the car lurched forward in stops and starts like a bucking bull. That fateful night, Frank was sitting on top of the pile of cars just outside the stadium as he always did. It was the depths of winter and wind and rain swirled around him. Despite being soaked to the skin, the boy never wanted to miss a race. Something was very wrong that night. Very wrong. As soon as the flag waved to start the race, Dad struggled to control his own car. Tonight there was no roar from the Mini's engine, rather that grinding noise. A deathly hush descended on the crowd and Frank felt sick to his stomach. Suddenly there was a huge explosion from Queenie's exhaust pipe. Bang! Dad! shouted the boy. From all that distance the man couldn't hear his son, especially over the thunder of all the other car's engines. Frank desperately wanted to help, to do something, anything, but he was powerless to stop what was about to happen. The Mini sped up dramatically and then wouldn't slow down. It was out of control. Zroom. The art of racing motor vehicles is knowing when to go fast and when to slow down. Immediately, Dad was taking the corners far too quickly. This wasn't what a champion banger racer did. Frank's heart was thumping in his chest. Queenie's brakes must have gone, but how? Dad would always check and recheck his car before every race. Suddenly, Queenie swerved sharply to avoid a head-on collision with a Ford Capri, but the Mini was going far too fast, and as it turned, it rolled over and over and over. Boom, boom, boom! Dad's car was now upside down in the middle of the track. The Jaguar behind smashed into the Mini, sending the car flying through the air. It crashed to the ground again. Bam! Smashing into pieces. No, Dad, no! shouted Frank from the top of the Tower of Cars. Down on the track there was a mighty pile-up as the cars couldn't stop in time. Smash, bang, crash! There was the sound of metal crunching into metal and glass smashing. Kaboom! One of the cars exploded into a fireball. No! shouted Frank. The boy raced down the Tower of Cars and ran through the crowds to his dad's car. An air ambulance hovered overhead before landing on the track. Frank held his father's hand through the wreckage as the fireman tried to cut him out of the car. Oh, what are you doing here, mate? whispered Dad. You should be at home in bed. I'm sorry, Dad, replied Frank. I'm going to need the biggest huggle when I'm out of this. Everything's going to be all right, Dad, I promise but it was a promise the boy couldn't keep. Chapter 3. Crushed in the Crash <laughs> Frank held his father's hand as the ambulance raced to the hospital. The man's right leg had been completely crushed in the crash and he was losing a lot of blood. Uh, Mr Goodyear, began the doctor as soon as Dad had been rushed into the accident and emergency department of the hospital. I have some very bad news. We have to amputate your leg. Which one? replied Dad, not losing his sense of humour at this dark time. Uh, the right one, of course. Uh, if we don't operate straight away, there's a real chance you will die. I don't want you to die, Dad, said Frank. It's all right, mate. I'm good at hopping. As Dad was immediately taken down to the operating theatre, Frank tried and tried to call his mother, but the line was engaged for hours. The operation took all night. Frank paced up and down the waiting area, unable to sleep. When his father came to from the anaesthetic in the morning, his son was the first person he saw when he opened his eyes. Mate, you're the best, whispered Dad. It was clear he was in a lot of pain. I'm so pleased you made it, Dad, replied Frank. Of course, I didn't want to miss seeing you grow up. Where's your mother? I don't know, Dad. I called her and called last night, but I couldn't get through. She'll come. It was a couple of hours until she did. Oh, Gilbert, she said upon seeing him and burst into tears. The family reunion was brief, though, as she didn't stay that long. Gilbert was in hospital for months, but his wife's visits to his bedside became less and less frequent and shorter and shorter. However... The nurses set up a little camp bed for Frank and the boy slept by his father's side every single night. 
One day, the doctors came in with a wooden leg for Gilbert. It fitted him perfectly. Within days, he learned to walk again and insisted on walking all the way back to their block of flats from the hospital. I can still do everything, said Dad proudly. He walked with a limp and Frank held his hand the whole way, but they got home eventually. When they arrived back at the flat, Mum wasn't there. She had left a note on the kitchen table and it read, To Frank and Gilbert, I am sorry, Rita. Well, that's where we'll finish today. That's the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed Bad Dad. Yeah, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel. Thanks a lot and see you next time for part two.